is fine. Uh, so in this in this wave optics, firstly we are having that we are having the Huygens principle. Huygens principle. Okay. Okay. In the Huygens principle, we are going to introduce the okay. We are going to introduce the secondary wave front. Secondary wave front. Wave front. Okay. Okay. Next. After this, we are having the principle of superposition. Principle of superposition. Then we are having the interference. Interference and then conditions and then conditions next we are having the ydsc that is Young's double slit experiment comma interference in thin films interference in thin films Next, we are having diffraction and then finally, we are having the polarization. In some of the test books, in some of the test books, what they will do it is resolving power of microscope and telescope. Okay, resolving power of microscope and telescope, they will give in wave optics. Have you studied in your uh, ray optics? This one? Uh, yes, uh, I studied in Epsilon and studied. Uh, some topic, uh, in some books, they will give it in the wave optics. Yes, sir, I've seen okay. MCRT. Fine. Optics. Okay, fine. Now, here it is in the yeah. J mains. In the J mains, they will ask from this minimum one question and maximum two questions. Okay. Previously, they asked in this topic. Okay, sir. That's number one. Nowadays, they are asking in the polarization. Okay. Polarization and thereafter. In the last year, that is in 2021 J mains, they asked in the diffraction. Okay. Fine. In okay, the Pitsat and the local entrance exams, state level entrance exams means, state level entrance exams means, we'll have this principle of superposition. So whenever you are preparing, give the order of preference, this one. My order of preference it is interference conditions and then YDSC interference in thin films it is first priority. Next priority is okay. polarization. Third priority it is diffraction. That is that is the probability of asking the questions. Okay. Fine. Firstly, okay, sir. Hmm, fine. Firstly, before going to Huygens principle, okay. In the optics, firstly, we are having the theories of light. In the theories of light, I think you might study it in your lower standard, Newton's corpuscular theory. According to Newton, he explained that these light rays are in the form of particle and each particle he considered it as corpuscles such that Newton explained this behavior of these light particles in terms of particle nature. 
that's why we will call them ray optics as uh, this one geometrical optics so in ray optics you studied about the particle nature okay that's why you can see every time in the uh, ray optics we used to find the object distance image distance and thereafter the velocity of object or velocity of image okay like this but now in the wave optics later huygen explained that each light particle will moves in the form of a wave in the form of a wave and this light particle and this light particle moves in the form of a wave and then planck also supported it and experimentally he proved that each light particle will moves in the form of a wave and he called this as photon right okay na no? mm. so in the wave optics we are considering that every light particle will moves in the form of a wave will moves in the form of a wave okay that's why we can call it as wave optics or we can also call them physical optics okay okay in this physical optics firstly we are having the wave front we are having the wave front okay now let us consider a source okay either it is a point source or any shape of the source spherical or cylindrical anything okay let us consider a source okay now <clears throat> if we apply an energy then from this from this source the light rays will be emitted in all directions right like this okay na in all yes sir is it fine yes sir okay now in all directions means here the light rays are emitted in the form of a wave like this in the form of a wave now each this particle is traveling to a distance is traveling to a distance let us consider this distance as r in every direction it travel to a distance r such that wherever it traveled uh, the light ray or the light waves travel to a distance r that point i will note okay like this and name it as a b c d e f g h okay that means from the source to any point a to h the light ray travel the distance is same okay okay now the locus of the points the locus of the points in which the light ray traveled the same distance this locus we are calling it as wave front okay now comes to the definition of wave front wave front is the locus of the light waves which traveled same distance or same quantity can be called as wave front here i consider one of the physical quantity that is distance we can consider with respect to amplitude or with respect to the intensity okay na yes sir okay i think you knows about amplitude yes sir i know about amplitude yeah. 
now comes to the intensity now comes to the intensity intensity is defined as amount of energy absorbed or energy emitted energy absorbed or energy emitted per unit area and per unit time can be called as intensity or simply i can write it as energy by time means power so i can write it as power by area okay okay fine that means when all the light rays if it having the all the light rays if it is having the same intensity the locus of the points having the same intensity can be called as wave front can be called as wave front okay now the points which are having the same amplitude or same intensity or same distance this we can call as an wavelet okay this we can call as an wavelet i will share this document whatever i am writing now i will share with you okay you can listen sir i am writing also ah uh, i will share the document i will okay, send the group or individually uh, i can send you that's not an issue okay that is what is the wave front now we are having the types of wave front types of wave front in this firstly we are having the spherical wave front spherical wave front that means suppose let us consider i am having a point source right whenever the light rays are emitted from the source which will travel to a point such that at that point like this at that point we are having the same amplitude or same intensity or you can consider the same distance travel same distance travel so the locus of the points which are having the same amplitude or same intensity can be called as wave front and this wave front it is in the shape of a sphere it is in the shape of a sphere so i can call it as spherical wave front i can call them spherical wave front okay fine okay next next one it is cylindrical wave front cylindrical wave front that is let us consider an i'm having a source okay which is in the form of an finite wire or we can consider an extended object extended object from this the light rays will be emitted to a distance to a distance up to here on the same side on both either of the same sides okay so whenever the if we join the locus of the points which are having the same amplitude and same intensity same amplitude or same intensity the locus of these points will forms an cylinder will forms an cylinder that's why and the shape of this one it is in the form of a cylinder so we can call it an cylindrical wave front okay next finally the third one it is planar wave front 
planar wave front that is if the source is placed at large distance suppose here i am having a source and here i am having observer okay such that the distance between source and observer is in the order of is in the order of greater than 10 square meter 10 square meter then the light rays which are emitting which are emitting from the source will reach us to the observer like in the form of a plane in the form of a plane like this okay na is it fine yes sir okay fine that is up to here it is about the types of wave front types of wave front next it is about the properties of wave front properties of wave front likewise properties of light here also we are having that is the incident wave front reflected wave front and the normal okay all are mutually perpendicular to each other incident wave front reflected wave front and normal are in the same plane are mutually perpendicular to each other same plane next number 2 it is that always always incident wave front is perpendicular to reflected wave front reflected wave front okay na fine okay na yes sir uh, these two properties remember incident wave front and a reflected wave front and normal lie in the same plane and always incident wave front is perpendicular to reflected wave front okay these two properties are useful in the topic that is by using huygens principle okay by using huygens principle we need to derive the we need to derive that it is uh, this one uh, snell's law when the light ray is moving from denser to rarer i need to prove that i need to prove that refracted ray will be away from the normal right okay na by using huygens principle okay we need to explain the reflection and the refraction of light in the topic it is useful okay next comes to our huygens principle next comes to our huygens principle okay na fine okay fine now <clears throat> see here it is i can consider that we are having a source okay whatever be the shape of the source from this source light rays will emit right okay light rays will emit suppose let us consider okay let us consider the light rays are emitted in all the directions such that at these points okay let us consider that all the light rays are having the same amplitude are having the same amplitude right yes okay, 
Is it fine? Yes, sir. The locus of these points will forms and wavefront. This wavefront we are calling it as primary wavefront. Primary wavefront. Okay. Okay, na. Now, in this sir. primary wavefront, I call this one as wavelet. That is the point at which the light rays are having the same amplitude. Now, this wavelet will act as an secondary source. From this wavelet, again the light rays will emit. Okay, na. From this wavelet, again the light rays will emit. So that's why I can consider that it uh, each wavelet will act as a secondary source. Secondary source. Say for example, let us consider. <coughs> Sometime in the classes, you can consider any class. Okay, whatever the teacher explains the topic or any subtopic. So, uh, in a class, suppose if we are having fifty students are there. Okay, so in that class, teacher is explaining to all the fifty students in the same manner, right? Is it right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Let us consider forty students understand thoroughly in that class. Ten students they are having some doubts or confusion. So those ten students, okay. Sometimes what they will do it is they will ask any junior faculty or their friends, right? Okay, na. Yes, sir. So these junior teacher or their friends will act as an secondary source. Okay, sir. Okay, na. Right? Understood. Yes, sir. They are delivering the lecture from the secondary source. So again, locus of the points at which light rays are having the same amplitude can be called as secondary wavefront. Can be called as secondary wavefront. Okay. Hello. Understood. Or shall I repeat? Sir, understood. Mm. Because this primary wave friend, wavelet, secondary sources, these play an important role. These play an important role, even in the interference also. Okay, sir. Okay. Now comes to the statement of the Huygens principle. It says that whenever the uh, light rays are emitted from the source, such that it forms a primary wavefront. It forms a primary wavefront, and each wavelet in the primary wavefront will act as a secondary source will act as a secondary source okay na will act as a secondary source okay fine now that is the definition of the huygens principle that is the definition of the huygens principle okay okay fine now here we are having the whenever we say the source sources will be of different types one is monochromatic monochromatic and then coherent sources and then polychromatic 
monochromatic and then coherent sources and then polychromatic okay polychromatic yes sir okay monochromatic means the light rays which are emitted from the source will have the same wavelength same amplitude and same intensity the light rays which are emitted from this source will have the same wavelength same intensity okay and same amplitude okay example for this monochromatic source it is x rays okay i think you might study it somewhere in physics and chemistry x rays are monochromatic have you studied yes sir okay and um, in general with general knowledge uh, for the treatment treatment of cancer or treat in a fracture fractures we will use laser laser rays to identify laser rays are highly monochromatic that is always it will travel in a straight line and it will have the same wavelength next coherent sources next we are having the coherent sources that is the light rays which are having the which are having the same frequency same uh, frequency and then constant phase difference constant phase difference same or different amplitude amplitude with respect to amplitude it may be same or may be different then that type of sources can be called as then that type of sources can be called as coherent sources the light rays which are emitted from the source will have the same frequency constant phase difference same or different amplitude suppose let us consider i am having the two waves that is first one it is a times sin omega t minus kx another one it is a2 times sin of omega t minus kx plus pi by 3 okay na is it fine now yes sir here and uh, frequency same we are having a constant phase difference that is pi by 3 that is nothing but okay phi is equal to pi by 3 that is nothing but 60 degrees here i am having the yes, amplitude it is different a1 and a2 okay yes sir we can have amplitude also same if it is same amplitude also we can cause an coherent sources okay fine next polychromatic polychromatic means these light rays will have different wavelength will have different wavelength so whenever the wavelength is different intensity will also be different intensity will also be different generally i can say that intensity equal to energy per unit area per unit time right energy of the light rays since here light rays are moving in the form of a wave i can use the principle e equal to nh nu can i use that is nothing but nu means frequency so nhc by 
lambda a t okay na where n is an integer integer h is planck constant and c is the speed of light so we can say that intensity is inversely proportional to wavelength okay fine yes sir hmm. fine now after this we are having that eigen's principle secondary sources i told na okay fine now let us consider i am having a separation membrane here i am having a refractive index n1 and here i am having a refractive index n2 okay now let us consider an incident ray incident ray ab ab is my incident ray with respect to the point of incidence okay perpendicular to the surface will draw a normal this is my normal n such that this is my angle of incidence okay okay corresponding to this incident ray will have the reflector ray bc is my reflector ray okay and then let us consider r dash is my angle of reflection okay na angle of incidence equal to angle of reflection okay suppose let us consider n1 is greater than n2 such that this is my denser medium and this is my rarer medium so will how the refracted ray will be along the direction be this is my angle of refraction according to snell's law i can write it as n1 sin i is equal to n2 sin r right i think this you have studied in ray optics right yes sir ah uh, now here what we should do it is here what we should do it is with respect to wave front we should prove it this nels law with respect to uh, wave front we need to prove this one they will say the topic called by using huygens principle by using huygens principle prove prove reflection of light that is reflection of light it is it means that we need to prove angle of incident wave front is equal to angle of reflected wave front whereas comes to the refraction if the light ray is moving from denser medium to rarer medium denser to rarer then we need to prove that then we need to prove that angle of incidence is less than ang sorry angle of incident wave front i'll put as w i w r dash w angle of incident wave front is less than angle of reflected wave front this we need to prove okay na fine is it fine yes sir uh, now see here whenever i am having a light ray whenever i am having a light ray that means here i am having the light ray means that it will move in the form of a wave
it will move in the form of a wave that is say suppose like this okay similarly another wave from here okay it meets that means the joining of the points of the amplitude of the amplitude of the amplitude okay we are having an incident wavefront we are having an incident wavefront okay now since the incident wavefront and reflected uh, sorry incident wavefront and the reflected wavefront are perpendicular that is by using the properties by using the properties okay i can say that if the incident wavefront is this one angle of incident wavefront okay such that this is my reflected wavefront okay such that this is perpendicular i can write as incident wavefront plus reflected wavefront is equal to 90 okay na is it fine how sir see incident wavefront this one reflected wavefront yes, this one just like this is my incident wavefront and this one it is normal and reflected wavefront is this one angle of this one it is reflected wavefront so this total angle <coughs> incident wavefront plus reflected wavefront Can I write ninety? Can I write ninety? This total angle, ma. Uh -huh. Otherwise, you can see the properties, na. Incident wavefront is perpendicular to reflected wavefront. Yes, yes, yes. The property two, yes. Um. So here I wrote that one. Okay, na. Okay, fine. Now see here. It is that with respect to the surface. With respect to the surface, suppose this is my. This is my surface. So this angle. It is. I can write it as angle between normal and surface is ninety. So this angle I can write as. Ninety minus I W. Okay, na. Yes. And angle. I can write as ninety minus R W. This is nothing yes, but glancing angle. Glancing angle. Okay, na. Yes, sir. Glancing angle. Okay, fine. Now here we can see that here we can see that the glancing angle. Okay, the glancing angle. Okay, with respect to the surface, this one. Whatever this glancing angle is there, since we are having only reflection. we don't have any change in the medium refractive index is constant right so the glancing angle of incident wavefront glancing angle of incident wavefront wavefront is equal to glancing angle of reflected wavefront 
glancing angle of reflected wavefront why because here there is no change in medium if there is a change in medium then the light ray will get deviated right light ray will get deviated here since there is no change in medium okay with the same angle it will reflect it back so that's why you can say that 90 minus iw is equal to 90 minus rw okay na is it fine Okay, na Manish. Yes, sir. Hmm? Do you yes, understand sir. this one? Glancing angle. Yes, sir. Glancing angle. Ah, oh. since there is no change in medium. So there will be no deviation in the light ray. Even in the reflection, we can say that the deviation in the reflection, I can say 180 minus 2i. Yes, sir. Mm. So since there is no deviation, so the angle with which incident wavefront is incident with the same angle will have the reflected wavefront. Similarly, we are having the refracted wavefront. Similarly, we are having the refracted wavefront. That is, will prove that it is angle of incident wavefront is less than angle of refracted wavefront refracted wavefront okay by using the snell's law that is n1 sin i i w is equal to n2 sin r w r w it is refracted refracting angle of wavefront or simply we can say that angle of refraction okay now is it fine is it yes, fine sir. up to here okay let me keep Now, next one, it is that, suppose let us consider, let us consider this is the source. I'm from the source, let us consider that I'm having a light wave, which is emitted and moving in the form of a wave, like this. Let us consider with respect to the main axis, we are having the wave and this displacement I'm considering as y1. It is having an amplitude as a1. Okay. And it is having an frequency as omega. Okay. No? Fine. Now, let us consider, let us consider another wave. this one. Let us consider another wave having an amplitude as A2 and having a frequency as omega. Frequency as omega and having a displacement as Y2. Having a displacement as Y2. Okay. That means here 
you can see the the phase difference between the two waves phase difference is nothing but angular position between the two waves or angular position of a particle with respect to axis with respect to axis okay and this phase difference i am considering it as and this phase difference i am considering it as see this one i am considering it as phi okay and now this phi values will varies from 0 degrees is less than phi less than or equal to 2 pi right phase can vary values between phi to 0 to 2 pi right okay now okay now yes sir okay fine we know now while discussing the principle of superposition we are going to discuss that when these two waves superimposed or superposed then what will be the resultant displacement if the two waves are superposed are superposed then what is the resultant displacement that we are going to find by using the principle of superposition okay so by using principle of superposition we can say that by using principle of superposition that is you can see that this principle we applied in many chapters in the wave motion that is in the chapter waves sound waves and the string waves right and even in the electrostatics and even in the magnetism it says that whenever the two waves superimposed then the resultant displacement will be sum of the displacements of the two waves sum of the displacements of the two waves can i say by using the statement of the principle of superposition it says that if two waves are superposed such that such that the resultant displacement will be sum of the displacements of the two waves let us consider the first wave is having a displacement a1 times sin omega t minus kx and second wave i will consider it as a2 times sin of omega t minus kx plus phi okay na so by using this displacements displacement equation okay can i say the source is coherent or non coherent yes sir coherent so it is coherent source source is coherent right yes sir angular frequency that is frequency is same and it is having constant phase difference frequency is same same and but different amplitude as well as no issues yes sir okay fine now i'll find the resultant displacement that is y is equal to a1 times sin of omega t minus kx plus a2 times sin of omega t minus kx plus phi okay na no. yes sir i am considering that omega t minus kx as alpha instead of writing every time omega t minus kx i am considering alpha so 
y is equal to a1 sin alpha plus a2 sin of alpha plus phi right it is in the form of sin of a plus b so expand it a2 sin alpha cos phi plus a2 cos alpha sin phi can i write yes sir so y is equal to in the first two terms i am taking sin alpha as common a1 plus a2 cos phi plus cos alpha times a2 sin phi right okay na yes fine na okay now <clears throat> suppose if i add any two integers positive integer let us consider 5 and 8 what will be the resultant of these two integers again an integer only na yes okay. sir okay resultant of two integers or addition of two integers again we will get an integer yes sir can i say here what i am doing that here you can see what i am doing i am superposing two light waves two light waves so after superposition again i will get an resultant light wave yes a resultant light wave so resultant light wave it will be in the form of sin of this one only this one only na right yes sir so for that here what we are doing that it is we are assuming that this a1 plus a2 cos phi that is equal to resultant amplitude times the cos theta and a2 sin phi i'll consider it as r times sin theta okay why we are considering this one i will tell just a substitute so that y is equal to sin alpha times r cos theta plus cos alpha times r sin theta i can write it as r times sin of alpha plus theta can i write can i write yes sir that is nothing but alpha means i consider it as omega t minus kx right okay na yes sir so whenever we superpose the two light waves again the resultant light wave again the resultant light wave we got in the same manner see okay na can you see now we need to find the find magnitude of find 
magnitude of capital r comma phi find the magnitude of capital r comma phi okay na till now is it okay yes sir no issues na okay now what i will do i will call this equation as 1 this equation as 2 squaring and adding that is that is r square cos square theta plus r square sin square theta r square sin square theta which is equal to i can write as a1 plus a1 plus a2 cos phi whole square plus a2 sin phi whole square in the left hand side i will take r square as common so cos square theta plus sin square theta i can write as r square right since cos square theta plus sin square theta is equal to 1 can i write okay na cos square theta plus sin square theta yes sir as one okay yes, sir. expand this one we will get as sir i am getting a1 square plus a2 square plus 2 a1 a2 cos phi very good a1 square plus a2 square plus 2 a1 a2 cos phi yes sir ah uh, now comes here we consider the two light waves having amplitude so at any point of time a1 and a2 are same that means a1 and a2 are not varying at any point of time so a1 and a2 i will consider it as a constant okay this phi it is the phase difference right so suppose i want to get i want to get uh, what we call uh, maximum amplitude r must be equal to r max that means a1 and a2 are fixed so this cos phi must be maximum maximum value of cos phi will be plus 1 Yes, sir. Plus one, right? So, when phi is equal to, when phi is equal to either zero degrees or two pi, that is three sixty degrees. Cos zero is one. Similarly, cos three sixty is one. Right. to get the maximum amplitude we are having the condition that that phi must be 0 degrees or 360 degrees so i can write as r max square cos 0 is 1 so it will becomes as a1 plus a2 whole square so maximum amplitude will be maximum amplitude will be a1 plus a2 can i write similarly minimum amplitude no, no, no. minimum, minimum amplitude means minimum value of cos phi of cos phi it is minus 1 yes sir so 
minimum amplitude water will get condition r min will be a1 minus a2 because when r is equal to r min phi will be cos phi equal to minus 1 means i can say that phi equal to 180 degrees yes sir 180 degree 180 degrees comma 540 degrees etc yes sir and so on here also etc okay so we'll have that r min will be a1 minus a2 now yes sir let us consider a special case when phi equal to 90 degrees r is equal to cos 90 is zero yes sir so r is equal to under root of a1 square plus a2 square right so always any value okay the value of r resultant amplitude will be between a1 plus a2 and a1 minus a2 yes sir i can write as a1 minus a2 is less than r less than a1 plus a2 can i write so we can all also add equal sign hmm so less than and equal to ah less than or equal to here it will be less than or equal to hmm. equal okay, simple sir. means it is r equal to r max yes sir okay na okay yes sir now in order to find phi okay we consider that it is we divide equation plus a2 cos phi is equal to capital r cos theta yes sir and a2 sin phi is equal to capital r sin theta yes sir by using this i can say that tan theta equal to a2 sin phi upon a1 plus a2 cos phi yes sir if we know theta then i can find phi right? yes sir the same thing you might study it in vectors yes sir vector also yeah okay okay fine now up to here now see here it is intensity equal to energy per unit area and per unit time can i say yes, okay na energy if i consider one light ray i can write as h nu area will indicate with s okay na yes sir area will indicate with s okay fine so here i can write as hc by lambda times area into time okay na yes sir since from oscillation from oscillation i know that the total energy the total energy i know that i is equal to half m omega square a square by area times time right energy in an simple harmonic oscillator right 
okay and even in in the sound waves also the average intensity or average power they will give the average intensity will be half rho omega square a square okay ready remember so yes sir from this i can say that it is intensity is proportional to square of the angular frequency and intensity is proportional to square of the amplitude can i say okay now i know that resultant amplitude r square equal to a1 square plus a2 square plus 2 a1 a2 cos phi yes sir now since intensity is proportional to square of amplitude i can write as i is equal to in order to remove this proportionality i am keeping a constant k i is equal to k a square so i can write as i1 is equal to k times a1 square and i2 is equal to k times a2 square i is equal to k times r square can i write see this 3 yes sir so what yes. i will do it is multiply by k on both sides Uh, so that it is i is equal to i1 plus i2 plus here what i can write it is root k a1 multiplied by root k a2 so, can i write cos phi sir okay na sir are we putting right? equation of uh, resultant intensity huh sir are we proving resultant of uh, equation of resultant intensity here na see otherwise i'll write it as a r square is equal to k a1 square plus k a2 square <coughs> plus 2k a1 a2 cos phi okay na okay from here i wrote it as i is equal to i1 plus i2 plus 2k instead of a1 i can write as under root i1 by k instead of i2 i can write as i2 by k cos phi can i write yes sir and then k will be cancelled out hmm so it will becomes as resultant intensity i equal to i1 plus i2 plus 2 times under root i1 i2 cos phi okay this is the expression for this is the expression for resultant intensity now what are the conditions for the maximum intensity i1 and i2 see i1 means k times a1 square and i2 means k times a2 square right okay na 
So I1 and I2 are constants. It will not vary. That means resultant intensity will be maximum intensity when or if and only if, if and only if phase difference. What will be the phase difference? To get the maximum intensity. Manisha. So zero. To get the maximum intensity, phase difference must be zero degrees. Or 360 degrees. Sir. 360 degrees. Yes, sir. That means cost must be maximum. Always maximum intensity means this cost phi must be maximum. Cost phi will maximum value of cost phi is one. So phi must be zero or 360. So I can write as maximum intensity as I1 plus I2 plus two times under root I1, I2. That is nothing but I can write as root I1 plus root I2 whole square. Can I write? Okay, na? Yes, no. sir. Minimum intensity. Minimum intensity. What are the conditions? Sir, theta is equal to 180 degrees and Very 540 degrees. Phi equal to 180 degrees or 540 degrees, etc. So, minimum intensity will be I1 plus I2 minus 2 times because cos 180 means minus 1. So, minimum intensity will be root I1 minus root I2 whole square. Okay, na? Okay, fine. Now, here we are having a case that if I1 is equal to I2 equal to I0, what will be the resultant intensity? Resultant intensity will be I1 plus I2 plus 2 times under root I1, I2 cos phi. Right? Okay, now. So, resultant intensity will be 2 I0 plus 2 I0 cos phi. Upon yes. solving, we will get as 2 I0 times 1 plus cos phi. What is the value of yes, 1 sir. plus cos phi? Uh, I can write as 2 cos square phi by 2. Yes, sir. 2 cos square. 4 I0 cos square phi by 2. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. The same principle we'll use in the YDSC experiment and even in the in, uh, one of the case in interference in thin film. This equation you got anywhere? Yes, sir. I've seen this equation. Okay, now this one. Yes, sir. Okay. That means if we go to our first page, in this class, we discussed up to the here. Okay. Tomorrow, uh, tomorrow is it possible? This time?
Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, tomorrow, by uh, this time, it is possible six p.m. Yes, sir. Sir, tomorrow I am a free whole day. Tomorrow. Yes, sir. Tomorrow I am free, sir. Tomorrow you are sitting, na? Okay. Same time. Tomorrow we will discuss the interference. YDSC and interference in thin films. Okay, sir. In my lecture two, I will discuss this part. It is uh, lecture one. I'll keep as L one. This one L two. This part we'll discuss in lecture three. Mostly in the three lectures, okay, we'll complete the synopsis, and another two lectures we'll discuss numericals. Okay, na. Okay, sir. Fine. Okay, tomorrow this one interference and conditions, YDSC and interference in thin films. Tomorrow okay, is the sir. most important topic. Okay, sir. Okay, na. Okay, fine. Tomorrow we'll meet. Okay, once go through this. Okay, tomorrow we'll meet.